Flower and Garden, Food and Wine, Festival of the Holidays, they're all great. But I must admit, I'm partial to Epcot's International Festival of the Arts. Sure, Food and Wine has plenty of superior dishes, more variety, and a higher success rate overall with their options, and Flower and Garden has great fresh seasonal food, gorgeous gardens, and beautiful topiaries. But the Festival of the Arts excels at taking many different art forms and bringing them together for a uniquely Disney-fied celebration. I just love it. One can sit back and relax while listening to Broadway stars belt out hits, meet upcoming and well-known artists, or make your own art while sipping on sparkling libations and enjoying dozens of classic dishes, as well as unique options and deconstructed versions of your favorites. There's so much to love, and we're thrilled that the Festival of the Arts, now in its fourth year, seems like it's around to stay. While meeting my favorite living artist, Wyland, at last year's festival will always land at the top of my all-time best of the fest list, today we'll give you the rundown of the best food options of the 2020 festival. This is Epcot's shortest festival as it only runs until February 24th this year, so be certain to grab these while you can and let us know your thoughts in the comments below. I'm Heather, and on behalf of Brian and myself, we want to thank you so much for watching, subscribing to our channel, and for being a part of this community that's seeking the magical together at Disney and in day-to-day -day life. Now, ladies and gentlemen, prep your palettes because we're prepared to paint you a picture of the best of the fest. Please know that although some of the food is, we don't sugarcoat anything in our review. There are a few new dishes that made our list this year, but most are returning favorites that have either moved up or down the rankings based on little tweaks in their execution or delivery. The Festival of the Arts offers many delicious options, but we would only consider the top dishes we're discussing today as truly great. Thankfully though, there were only a couple dishes that left us sorely disappointed and we'll let you know which options to avoid and why at the end. Oddly, everything on our Best of the Fest list is available as a Disney Dining Plan snack credit, but the two options that made our Worst of the Fest list are not snack credit eligible. So have at it with the rest, Dining Plan users. Starting off our list at number 10 is the Festival of the Arts inspired seasonal mini cake available at Sunshine Seasons in the Land Pavilion for $5.99. This super artistic creation is made of yellow cake, marble dyed different colors, and layered with peanut butter buttercream that's topped with an extra dollop of frosting, a fondant artist palette, and a pretzel and fondant paintbrush. The whole thing is then splatter painted Jackson Pollock style with food coloring. It's by far the cutest dessert at the festival. And if you carry it all the way to Spaceship Earth like we did to get the perfect picture, many, many people will ask you where you got it. We were happy to fill them in, and you too, because for some odd reason, Disney isn't advertising this seasonal cake with all the other festival dishes on their website, and it's not included in the festival passport either. So we're saving you from needing to chant stumble on it and letting you know about this must get right away. Besides being adorable, it's a tasty little cake. We love that they use peanut butter in the frosting to cut the sweetness and expand the flavor profile but we still needed to wipe away some of the frosting as it's very rich. Nevertheless, it's a standout that we highly recommend. Coming in at number nine is another dessert option that also inches close to that line of too sweet, but thankfully stays on the good side. Returning to Decadent Delights and our best of the fest list this year is the white chocolate and purple sweet potato mousse available for $6.50. Adorned with cake pieces, caramel, coconut flakes, and puffed maple meringue, I would never guess that the light, well-prepared mousse is made of sweet potato. But it is. And I now know that sweet potato makes a surprisingly tasty mousse. And it adds depth of flavor that is a good counterpoint to the sweet, one-noteness of the white chocolate. Which is typically not my thing. The eighth item on our Best of the Fest list is the Santanore Tart, found at Cuisine Classique in the Journey Pavilion for $6. This dessert is a caramel cream tart with little crispy balls dispersed throughout, then filled with a rich caramel glaze and two small cream puffs coated with chocolate between a couple white chocolate decorative squares. 
I preferred to eat the chocolate squares and the cream puffs separately as I saw them more as decorative bonus treats while the tart was the star. The crisps in and on the tart were really the highlight, providing an additional texture to the flaky crust and gooey caramel. If you have a sweet tooth like me, I'm betting you'll love this one along with the two we just covered. Wow, we haven't had a savory dish yet. The desserts were just so good. They were, and while there are two more desserts that make our top 10, we aren't even mentioning many of the other tasty dessert options like the deconstructed strawberry cheesecake from the deconstructed dish, or the vanilla, rose water, and pistachio panna cotta from the Masterpiece Kitchen, along with several others that were delicious too. Don't get us wrong, they were good, just not good enough to make this list. Basically, we're telling you that if you're heading to the Festival of the Arts, save room for dessert. You're gonna need it. That's so true. Moving on to something savory. Coming in at number 7 on this list is the red wine braised beef short rib with parsnip puree, broccolini, baby tomatoes, and aged balsamic, also served at Cuisine Classique in Germany for $8. This is essentially a reduced portion of a complete restaurant quality plated entree. I had it last year as a complete dish, and I enjoyed it, but I found that the sauce was superfluous. So I ordered it without the aged balsamic this year and thought it was a big improvement. The tartness of the low quality balsamic rendered the dish slightly off key last year, but without it, the ingredients sang beautifully together. You're of course free to get it as you see fit, as it was still good with the sauce. It was just better without, in my opinion. The next item on our list also comes from Cuisine Classique, which, if you haven't figured out yet, gets the nod as our best booth of the fest. The booth offers three unique dishes that are all featured in our top 10, placing 8th, 7th, and now 6th. They also sell the Artist Palette Jumbo Chocolate Chip Cookie, but that item is available at numerous stands throughout the festival, and FYI is decent, but nothing super special. So ignoring the cookie, since it's not an exclusive item, the rest of the food options reflect a level of consistency and quality that all festival booths should strive for. And we say, well done. Completing the hat trick at number six is the seared Corvina with braised ratatouille and lemon thyme beurre blanc, selling for $7.50. This returning favorite is a fresh, uplifting dish. The fish had a sublime sear that locked in the delicate flavors and mingled so well with the rich, yet light, beurre blanc sauce, which added just a touch of acid from the lemon. Although mine probably sat out a little too long, the fish still fell apart with a fork into flaky bites. The ratatouille was decent, but the whole thing was carried by the fish and the sauce. Anyone who enjoys fish should consider the Corvina a must get. Of note, the Corvina is one of five dishes that make up the wonderful walk of colorful cuisine. This walk is the official food crawl of the festival and is modeled closely after Emile's Fromage Montage which was a cheese crawl introduced at the 2019 Epcot International Food and Wine Festival. However, unlike the montage, this crawl was rather successful and arguably worth your time and money. The required selections all ranged from good to great, and the reward for collecting all five stamps, an adorable artist palette sugar cookie and a cup of strawberry milk, was substantial and pretty tasty. To receive the bonus dessert pairing from Decadent Delights, guests must collect stamps in their festival passport for each of the following five dishes. The aforementioned Corvina, the almond frangipan cake found at Pop Eats, the panna cotta from the Masterpiece Kitchen, the pan-seared scallop from the artist table, and the deconstructed BLT from the deconstructed dish. Stay tuned to see which of the other five selections makes it in our top half of our best of the fest list. Now, entering the top half with number five is the chocolate peanut butter and pretzel crunch found at Decadent Delights for $6.50. This aesthetically pleasing dish is one of the more elegantly plated options at the festival, and it doesn't disappoint from looks to taste. The chocolate cake is rich and moist, almost mousse-like, while the raspberry coulis is mild and not too sweet. We love that the peanut butter crisps are dispersed throughout the cake providing a surprising bite to the otherwise silky smooth texture. We liked this last year too, but there were significantly more crisps this time around, which elevated the dish overall. Just off the metal platform coming in fourth on our list is the Polo alla Pirandello found at La Arte di Mangiare in the Italy Pavilion for $10, 
or a Disney Dining Plan snack credit just like all the others. So take note, Dining Plan users, this is one of the best deals at the festival for your snack credits. I will say though, I was highly disappointed that the chicken leg we purchased didn't have the mini chef's hat that is featured on many of the promos from Disney. That was a legit letdown, and it made me question if it was worth spending $10 on a single chicken leg with no hat. I mean, really. The logical part of me still questions it, but it was so good we ended up buying a second one the next day. So as per usual, my taste buds trump logic. No judgment here. I was right there with you. I think that makes you either an accomplice or an enabler. Or both. But no matter. The chicken drumstick was perfectly fried and stuffed with sweet ricotta cheese then laid on a bed of pomodoro sauce and more cheese. If fried stuff with cheese excites you as it does us, and Joey from Friends, all the points by the way if you got that reference before I said Joey, you need to suppress your logical mind and spend $10 on this chicken leg. Also note that this item has proven very popular, and the booth has run out of it repeatedly during the festival, so head to Italy earlier in the day if it's a priority for you. To sample the dish placing third on our best of the fest list, head to the artist table in the American Pavilion and order the pan seared scallop with chorizo, roasted red pepper coulis, and a parmesan crisp for $7. The scallop was flavorful with a smooth, grit-free texture and a nice sear that lent to only a faint aftertaste. Notably, it was the best scallop I've ever had at an Epcot festival, and they usually do them fairly well. Beyond the scallop, the chorizo added a delightful contrasting flavor and texture, and the red pepper coulis tied everything together with a hint of spice and sweetness to complement the buttery scallop. The mild heat nestled on my palate while I enjoyed this dish, and I would happily order it again. Our runner-up for the second year in a row is the must-get, Sopes de Barbacoa from El Artista Ambriento in the Mexico Pavilion for $7.25. This dish features braised shredded barbacoa beef, served on a fried guajillo corn shell with black beans, cotija cheese, and Mexican cream and chives. Neither of us are big fans of black beans, so it says something that we love this dish, even with the beans. We also scraped them off once and just went the lazy way and ordered it without beans once too. While we thought the lack of beans improved the dish, it was already an amazing option. Yes, I admit, we shared three of these little sopes this year and we could have had more if we weren't trying to save room for everything else. There is just so much to love about the moist, slow cooked barbacoa paired with the saltiness of the cheese and cream the flaky yet crisp shell, and the zesty crunch of the slaw-like toppings. It's also well balanced, and we highly recommend that you make it a priority to order one or three. Now I'm really, really hungry. I want to sample all these dishes once more and end the multi-course dining extravaganza with the offering that comes in number one on our list. Grabbing the top spot yet again is the Molu au Chocolats Valrona found at l'Art du Cuisine Francaise in the France Pavilion and selling for $7. In a way, I'm critical of the fact that such a classic, even basic dish has managed to come in first on our list for the 2020 Epcot International Festival of the Arts. But it's undeniable. Every other item on our list has at least one thing we would change or tweak on it if we could. But there's really nothing negative to say about this one. When a timeless, crowd-pleasing favorite is consistently done to perfection, it deserves the recognition. Although it's not the most exciting option, it certainly isn't dull. Each little lava cake is imbued with delicious, molten Valorona chocolate and is filthy rich while avoiding being excessively sweet. Moreover, it perfectly straddles the line between the moist, but not dense, structured cake and the gooey, rich, molten center. It's exquisite. Yep, my most watering. How about yours? I'm right there with you. So before we kill this decadently delectable vibe by talking about the two dishes that earn the unfortunate distinction of the worst of the fest, we'll quickly let you know about a few dishes that were just this close to making our top 10. While these three dishes were all noteworthy, they fell short for one reason or another. Still, they're good enough to be considered among the top tiers of festival dishes. The first is the sous vide chicken roulade with apples and sage served over warm brie fondue with blueberry and beet gels and garnished with beet chip crumbles, 
found Pop Eats for $6.75. We love this one yet again this year, but the presentation was weaker. Next, we want to shout out the Creme de Brie and Petit Pont from the Art de Cuisine Francaise in the France Pavilion, available for $7.75. This adorable little branded bread bowl is stuffed with warm, creamy brie cheese. Last year, the cheese was more of a soup than the thick, spreadable cream we were served this year. As odd as it may sound, we preferred the cheese soup because it maintained a better balance of ooey gooey cheesiness to the relatively small portion of bread. Finally, we recommend the Deconstructed Reuben headed from the Deconstructed Dish for $6.75. Funny, I sense a theme with the names of dishes at that booth. Ha ha. Anyway, the deconstruction is achieved by layering the corned beef on a crisp bed of lightly fried sauerkraut with Jarlsberg cheese and Thousand Island dressing. Neither of us typically care for sauerkraut, but I actually found this to be exceptional. I give mad props to anyone who can make me truly enjoy something I normally don't like. So if Rubens are your thing, you're likely going to love this even more. I agree. I wouldn't go so far as to say I liked it, but I didn't absolutely hate it. And that is saying something too. I'll say, there were plenty of other crowd-pleasing favorites at the festival, but that concludes the dishes that were notable enough to make our best of the fest list. I was happy with the selection overall, but I do think many of the dishes were not quite on par with last year's Festival of the Arts. This year, more of the offerings were just decent, as they simplified a lot of the plating and cut corners preparation-wise, and it showed. That was disappointing to see, since more intricate plating and increased attention to the craft of cooking is one of the things that makes the Festival of the Arts stand out. I really hope they change that back for next year. Same. I also hope they improve the two dishes on our Worst of the Fest list. They are the Wild Mushroom Risotto, available for $9.25 from the Masterpiece Kitchen, and the Symphony and Chocolate Flight paired with Cream Liqueurs, selling for $13 from the Artist Palette. While it's not shocking that the Alcoholic Chocolate Flight is not Disney Dining Plan snack credit eligible, we're surprised that the Wild Mushroom Risotto isn't either, when that is actually cheaper than the chicken from Italy. Regardless, I wanted to love the first one, especially since risotto is one of my favorite things to eat and cook, but they killed it with the fake truffle flavor. It was just too much and not palatable after a couple bites. The latter was a good idea in theory, since everyone loves the non-alcoholic sipping chocolate flight so much that includes white, milk, and dark chocolates, but it was like drinking poorly blended cough syrup. I don't know if the Mozart cream liqueurs were ever well mixed with the sipping chocolates, but they separated immediately and made a gooey, sickeningly sweet syrup in the lighter liquid. It was a struggle to consume. Yes, it really was. Thankfully, there were so many other scrumptious, sweet, and savory options that we highly recommend instead that you don't need to bother with those two. Very true. We hope you've enjoyed our rundown of the best and worst of the Epcot International Festival of the Arts, and we're happy to continue the discussion and answer any questions in the comments below. Also, Please give this video a like to let us know that you want more content like this and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Thank you again for watching and remember to hug your loved ones, cherish the memories, and always continue seeking the magical.